Hello, I'm Sean Kalaki, uh, author of the book Mundelein and also a member of the Mundelein Historical Commission. And I'm going to be showing you a slideshow of pictures from my book um, and also give you a history of the village of Mundelein. Uh, I wrote this book back in 2009 when we had the uh, Mundelein Centennial celebration going on. And I was able to uh, get about 200 pictures or so to uh, put into the book on the history of the village. So in this area of Lake County and what ended up becoming Mundelein um, was all unsettled until the early 1800s, around 1830s, uh, when the settlers from the east started coming over this way. And uh, they decided to make a, um, an area to settle down. And a lot of the uh, settlers that came over in the 1840s were uh, mechanics from uh, England and from the east coast. And so they decided to name their uh, settlement uh, Mechanics Grove. This picture here is the uh, first school that they had, Mundelein, or I'm sorry, Mechanics Grove School. Uh, later on, a gentleman by John Holcomb came over. Uh, he was from New York and he bought up uh, a lot of the land in this area and decided to donate uh, a good portion of it to the village so that they could start building their shops, stores, um, library, um, post office, everything, so that they could start developing a village. So because of that, they uh, decided to rename this uh, village from Mechanics Grove to Holcomb. And this was the house that Mr. Holcomb had with his family, which was on uh, Route 176. Um, other uh, famous, well-known people around here that started showing up was the Rouse family. This is one of their homes here and right there. So they ended up all coming in here and developing. Um, An entrepreneur by the name of uh, Samuel Insull uh, offered to uh, build the railroads, to have the railroads come in that were going from Chicago to Milwaukee, to have them come start heading uh, west over to the village of Holcomb to start having people coming in. Um, so that people would do that and start wanting to come in here and see our village, uh, they decided to change the name again. So they went from Mechanics Grove to Holcomb and the third name, it was Rockefeller, named after this gentleman here from the famous Rockefeller family. You can see here they even changed the sign on the um, train station, the newly formed train station that now came over from the main line over to here. Uh, story goes that uh, uh, Mr. Rockefeller heard about this, the village being named after him, took the train in. Um, and uh, got off the train to look at the village that was named after him, um, looked around, got back on the train after about two minutes. So he didn't spend much time in the, the village that he, uh, that was named after him. In the late 1800s, around 1894 or so, uh, the second school was built, the Lincoln School which is on 176 and still exists today and is used by Mundelein and Fremont for their students um, to come in for kindergarten, and preschool and such. Um, this, uh, the main front of it is still exists today, you can see, and uh, we just added on to the back the different extensions. This here still exists on Seymour. So they built the Central Hotel uh, for people coming off the train, which was right up the street, and being able to stay somewhere while they were in uh, town. And so this still exists today. It just has apartments in it now, but it is one of the, along with the Lincoln School, one of the oldest buildings that we have still uh, existing in the village. 
This was called the Hardin's Hotel on 45 and 176. And later the name was changed to the Cameron Hotel. Again, you can see down here, we're still talking about Rockefeller, Illinois was the name of the village. Another family, besides uh, the ones I've mentioned, that came into this area was the Ray family. And on Route 60, they had their home here. And then the next one that came in and started making a real mark was um, Arthur Sheldon. He was an entrepreneur also. He made this school here, which is the Sheldon School of Business. And it's, uh, it was built out by where the seminary is now. And what uh, he was very much into was acronyms. And so he had this famous acronym as a, uh, like a slogan for the, uh, for the business school was ability, reliability, endurance, and action. And so if you put those together, it's A-R-E-A, -E area. And so then people decided uh, they want to change the name again to the village, of the village. So it went from Mechanics Grove to Holcomb, Rockefeller and then to area. So it became area, Illinois. And you can see here by the train station, they changed the name again to area. And that's what people went by for the name of the village. Then came along Cardinal Mundelein from Chicago. He came up this way and he wanted to build uh, the largest seminary in the country up in the village of area. There's another picture of them here. And so in the 1920s, uh, they started building the seminary out there. And these, a lot of these buildings, if you go out there now, look just like it, it does here. They really haven't changed at all. And he was going for a look of uh, European, Italian type of uh, uh, look in it with the bridges, the, the street lamps and such when he was having this built. Main gate, which still pretty much looks the same. If you're going down 176, you can see it. Here is a, um, it's a soldier that fought in World War I, and the Heinz family was a friend of, the, uh, of Cardinal Mondelein. And when he was killed in, in war, uh, they asked of having him built, uh, I'm sorry, buried on the um, seminary grounds. And this still exists today too. You can go and see this and you look through the door here. Uh, he isn't buried there anymore, but there is still the tomb. So you can still see that. When I was writing this book uh, and doing a lot of research on the seminary for the book, uh, they let me hear in the uh, chapel, the main chapel of the, villa, of the uh, seminary. And right behind the uh, altar, right in there, is where Cardinal Mondelein is buried. You can actually go back and see his tomb back there. It was kind of neat. They also have a bowling alley, which still exists today. The library, which is amazing. Uh, just the architecture of it is, is a really amazing one. I wanted to go see that. You ever get a chance to do that and of course the whole seminary is on lake mary and this is still looks the same as uh as it, as it does uh today as it did back then now because he built this uh seminary in the village of area they wanted to thank cardinal mondelein uh for doing that and uh, so again the village was named once more, one more time and so it went from Mechanics Grove to Holcomb, Rockefeller area, and then finally Mundelein, which is today. These next ones are phone books back then. I wanted to show the, um, how the names were changing and stuff, even through the phone books. Um, right here, there's Rockefeller. Of course, Libertyville has the biggest name here at that time, had the largest population. Again, Libertyville, the big one around here, and there we are at area. And then we go again. And by that time, Mundelein had caught up to Libertyville as far as population. We're up to about 500 residents at that time. These next pictures I wanted to show is uh, five of them of this corner of Seymour and um, Park where uh, just to show the chain, there, were, there was a lot of changes, but actually a lot of stuff stayed the same. Uh, this was 1900 with the uh, horse and buggies. There it is again, just about nine years later. 
still you can see a dirt road um, for Seymour there. Then we went to the 1940s. We start getting the automobile, the 1950s, and then uh, present day in the 2000s, this was. So back in the 1900s, the, um, the village, uh, which was Rockefeller at the time, uh, this was their fire equipment pulled by horse. And eventually they went to this uh, horse cart, which was pulled by a, a car. And actually, if you go to the new uh, Mundelein Heritage Museum, the, uh, this cart here is still there. We actually have it in the museum. So going back to Cardinal Mundelein and having a, a seminary here and having the village named after him, well, he wanted to make sure that uh, his seminary was well protected. And this little cart was not gonna do it if there was ever a fire out there. So he actually uh, purchased his 1925 Stoughton uh, fire truck. And we named it Old Number One. And this was the first fire truck for the village of Mundelein. Uh, here in this picture, it's showing it down at uh, Navy Pier being uh, serviced, but uh, that is, we were able to find this truck. Uh, it was up in Wisconsin, the uh, Centennial Committee that I was on, and we found this truck and uh, rebuilt it, and it is now running uh, in, in our parades and such in the village of Mundelein. If you go down to the main um, fire station on Midlothian. You can actually go in and see that uh, truck. So the seminary brought in a lot of business. Was, like I said, the population of Mundelein at the time in the 1920s was uh, 500. Well, he had the uh, 28th Eucharistic Congress going on in June of 1926. And that brought the population from 500 up to um, Oh, well over a million uh, people coming up to see. There it is there. So it, it, it had a big crowd come up, let's just say, that to our village to go uh, to, about, to a million people coming up to see it. So they came up by cars, trains, even walked from Chicago just to see the, the, the Congress. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the village hall. Uh, because by this time, um, the village was um, now considered a, a incorporated uh, village. And um, so they needed an official village hall. And so 1929, this one was built. And if you look in the back here, that gentleman right there is uh, Samuel Insull, who brought the uh, uh, train tracks to us. The railroad came into this village. And so he was actually able to give the uh, dedication speech that day. This is the picture I used for the cover of my book. I really thought it stood for the village itself, this building. Um, it, uh, it was for uh, the mayor was housed here on any kind of administration. The police and the fire uh, department were all in this building. Here's the bay where they, there's number one right there, old number one it was kept there at that building. Um, and then this was the most recent picture taken of uh, the village hall before it was torn down in 2020 uh, for the new village hall, which was built uh, just down the street. Out by uh, Mundelein High School, they had this, uh, what was called the a model farm. And what this was is it showed people the uh, new things that were coming in now in the early 20th century, like the um, anything electronic, like washing machines and, and refrigerators, all this. I was showing how a model home was gonna look in the future. And it's, uh, it's very funny now, uh, we've come so much further, but they used to have different uh, events up there at Model Farm for people to come. Uh, Gordon Ray, back to the Ray family that I showed earlier in this, uh, they, the brothers got together and down at Diamond Lake actually uh, made uh, an entire re resort down there. Uh, this is the ice cream parlor. They had a uh, regular resort for people to come down and enjoy the lake, uh, 
famous people like Jack Benny would come and stay at the um, Ray Brothers resorts up at Diamond Lake. Uh, two floods to show you that happened in the Mundelein village in the 19, 1936. Uh, actually, this one was on Lake Street. It got flooded pretty bad. And then a year later, still on Route 45 there, uh, another flood. This is the Diaz uh, stables uh, out off of uh, 176. This was a place where they had uh, a dance hall up on the second floor and people would, uh, a lot of events that happened. You can see there was a place to eat and everything. So that was another uh, happening place in the village of Mundelein. This is Penny Polk Farm and it was owned by actor Marlon Brando. Of course, a lot of people know on how he uh, grew up in Libertyville. He was an usher at the one of the theaters there. He had this farm out on uh, Holly, and he let his sister live out there until she passed. And he actually had it, it was pretty run down. Uh, I actually took these pictures because I, I lived uh, very close to it. And uh, what he wanted was this to be uh, the land to be donated back to um, Native Americans. Uh, it never was. It ended up. Uh, it's now a giant complex called uh, Grand Dominion. On Midlothian, if you go to the community center, this is Toboggan Hill, which today we still have uh, sledding going on every winter there. Cracklower Park, downtown Mundelein, and Mr. Cracklower there. This is uh, Ray's uh, Auto Service, which was very famous back then. Um, when I was doing this book, I uh, got to meet uh, Ray. And he was about 90 or so when I met him, very nice man. He gave me a lot of info on the village and uh, just growing up here and what he went through and stuff. And it was very neat. He was a very nice man. This, I put this in here because this is the one photo that did not make my book. The, uh, my publishers tried and tried, but the horse here and the men just came out too dark and it just would not come out in the book as far as print. But I, I really thought it was neat on how they were getting ice out there on Diamond Lake. And, but this one just never made my book. So that's the uh, little brief history of uh, the village of Mundelein. I hope you all enjoyed this. And uh, you can always go to Village Hall for any kind of um, questions that you may have. Thank you very much and take care.